we're going to learn how we can solve single step addition and subtraction problems. Evidence wise, uh, we're going to be using the uh, addition and subtraction properties of quality that we learned in the last video. Make sure you go watch that if you haven't yet. Um, we're going to work on isolating your variable, checking your work, and showing all of your math thinking. That last one is especially important because some of these problems you're going to look at and say, I don't need to show my work, I just know what the answer is. There's a reason that we want to show the work. The learning experience is down there, um, as per usual. Exciting. Let's carry on to our first example. So, uh, we have two problems here. Uh, the first one is x plus 3 is equal to 4, and the second one is x minus 5 is equal to 9. Uh, we're going to go through both of these, uh, showing all of our work. Now, there's a good chance that with, especially like that first one, you could look at it and immediately know what x is. It's all in my head. It's all in my head. And that's great. That shows that you have uh, a pretty good understanding of how math works, but we still want to make sure that we show all of our work. Whenever we deal with a problem like this, our goal is going to be to isolate the variable, to get the variable by itself. And I would suggest, if you have to, uh, it's not a bad thing to write down at the top of your page. That way you remember what it is that you're trying to do. Get variable by itself. If you write that at the beginning of each paper where you have to do problems like this, you should easily remember what it is that you're trying to do. Um, that means in this first problem, we eventually want to get x by itself is equal to some number. All right. Same thing with the second problem, but let's do the first one first. So we are going to look at what operation we have here. We see that we have addition. And since we have addition, we want to undo the addition. To undo addition, you'd have to subtract. So we are going to use the subtraction property of equality. That means that we are going to subtract a number from both sides of our equation. Since we have a 3, and that's what we want to get rid of, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. Perfectly balanced. When we do that, we can say that we either have just x by itself, or we could say x plus 0 if you prefer. Doesn't really matter. And on this side, we have 4 minus 3, which would be 1. Now, of course, x plus 0 is just x. This side has not changed, so we can say that x is equal to 1. So again, you could have probably figured that out by looking at it, but there's a reason that we are doing this, why we are showing all of the steps. The last part of this is just to make sure that you're correct. You're going to rewrite your... Let's do this in a different color. You're going to rewrite your original equation, but instead of using x, you are going to put in what you found for x. So we had a 1 for x. So let's make sure that this works. Does 1 plus 3 equal 4? Well, 1 plus 3 is 4. And 4 definitely equals 4. So we've checked our work. We know for a fact that x has to be the answer. It has to be the solution. All right. Again, you could probably figure that out by just by looking at it. But there's a reason that we're doing it this way. On to the second one. We again want to get x by itself. Sometimes it does help to put the x is equal to somewhere at the bottom. You just need to make sure you leave yourself enough space to show your work. This time, we have subtraction in our equation. So since we want to undo subtraction, we have to do the reverse, which would be addition. So we're going to use the addition property of equality. And that means that we are going to add a number to both sides of our equation. Now, since we want to get rid of the 5, we are going to add 5 to both sides. Bounced. When we do that, we get x minus 0, which is just x. 9 plus 5 is 14. So we know that x should equal 14. That one you might not have been able to do as easily in your head. Maybe maybe you could, but it's possible. 
Um, and again, we can check our work by plugging our equation back into our original express, uh, rather our very our solution into our original expression uh, equation. And we'll see that 14 minus 5 equals 9, and last time I checked, 9 definitely equals 9, so that equation is true, which means x must equal 14. So, take a minute, write down anything that you need to, pause the video if you need to, and then we're going to go on to our you do problem. In this you do, you actually have to do two different problems. Um, they're both very similar to the last ones, they're not much harder. One of them does have decimals in it, um, but that's okay. You can deal with decimals. If you need to review how to add and subtract with decimals, go watch that video. Um, pause the video now. Give it your best shot. Ready to go. So why do we even bother doing it through this method? Um, this first example is just the same thing. Previously, we subtracted... 3 from both sides, and we got p was equal to 1. And again, we could do that just by looking at it. We could say, well, what plus 3 equals 4 has to be a 1. 1 plus 3 equals 4, so p must equal 1. Where you run into problems is when you get to something harder like this. And we won't necessarily do anything like that unless it's a challenge problem. Um, but I do want to show you why we need to know these steps in order to do the harder stuff. Um, in this problem, we want to get y by itself. And you'll notice that we have both multiplication right here, and we have addition. So we need to actually do two different things. Um, we're going to start off by getting rid of our addition. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, just like we did in the previous part. We're going to end up with 2y is equal to 1. Now again, you have to think, well, what do I do next? Next, you'd have to, and this is a little bit of a preview for the next video, but you're going to have to get rid of this multiplication. Opposite of multiplication would be division, so what if we divide both sides by 2? That'll get rid of this and leave us with a y, which means y would have to equal 1 half. Now, again, that's a preview for the next video, this multiplication and division. Um, but you can see where as you add more and more complex equations, you're going to need to make sure that you have a step-by-step -step process to actually solve problems like this. Otherwise, it gets very, very hard. You can't really just look at it most of the time and figure out what your answer is. Um, you really, really, really do need to practice this, check your work, um, show all of the steps. Things to remember from this video. Show all the steps you do. Don't just do it in your head. Um, sometimes you can, but again, it's going to be better practice and better in the long run if you do show every single step. Um, especially when we're starting this out, because you might make a mistake, and then you know where you messed up uh, your thinking. Um, use the opposite of whatever operation you see. If you see addition, you're going to use the subtraction property of equality. If you see subtraction you're going to use the addition property of equality. You want to basically undo uh, the operation that is originally in your equation. Finally, check your work when you're done. This is the best way to prove to yourself that you did get the right answer. You don't have to ask me if you got the right answer. You don't have to ask your teacher. Um, you don't have to ask whoever. You can just check it yourself, and then you'll know if you're correct or not. Um, so really, really important things to remember. You might even want to write these down. If you do, you can pause the video here. Um, but we're just going to continue on. So suggested practice problems for today. There look like there are a lot of them, but what I would suggest doing is pick one of these three difficulties. You can pick either normal, hard, or lunatic, um, and work through those six problems. Um, normal is what I would expect you to be able to do. So if you want to start there, that's totally fine. That's, that's the expectation. Hard gets a little bit harder. You throw in fractions and decimals. Um, and lunatic has some that aren't one-step equations. Some of them take two steps. Um, and you can see if you can figure out how to do those. So um, pick whichever one works best for you. Good luck.